Since East Bay Innovations has been around now, oh goodness, 24 years. Um, and I'm probably wrong, 1994. Somebody out there needs to do the math for me. <laughs> Seems like we just had our 20th anniversary yesterday. But um, we started as a supported living agency. Our founder and um, executive director, Tom Hines, is really passionate about people accessing the community as close to, as possible as anybody else would. And so a lot of individuals who may have otherwise wound up in group homes or institutions, um, he helped them to move out into their own homes. And from there, um, started helping people who needed maybe a little less support, up to what, is it 40 hours a month for independent living? Assessed, and need assessed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and so, um, and so we do support people in independent living to move out into their own home, to learn about different activities in the community, everything that you, that you may take for granted about living in the community on your own. We get really involved with housing, set-asides, um, working with developers to make sure that there's housing for people who are low income, and even more specifically, individuals with disabilities. Um, so we're really excited about that. I work in the employment services, and when I started, we were only supporting people in individual placement in the community. That means that we've supported a person to find out what type of job they may be interested in. Then we meet with the employer, find out what types of jobs they have to offer, and then we'll make a recommendation and support that individual through the interview process and then provide job coaching once that job match is made. And we got to this point where we realized about 77% of the individuals that we were supporting were in retail or grocery. And while these jobs were really great, it really didn't match the jobs that people worked in in the community, nor did it provide an opportunity for a lot of the individuals who were now graduating um, from high school or coming out of transition who may have autism or other disabilities. And we work with prim primarily individuals with autism and with developmental disabilities and we realized we needed to do something. So we went in search of a program that would help us create jobs in what was coming to be um, a great boom in public sector and healthcare sector employment. And we went to Seattle, we met with somebody who was working successfully with Kings County up there, and they said, no, 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 you need to go visit Cincinnati Children's Hospital where Project Search was started. And so I flew back there with a couple of people, I think actually Will went with us one time, and um, so we had, we got a grant together, it was a, collaborate, a collaborative grant with a couple of other agencies, including Futures, and we went back there to learn about Project Search. We came back, and we replicated it first at Children's Hospital in Oakland, now UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital in 2008. And then in 2009, the Board of Supervisors of the County of Alameda approved Project Search, and we replicated it in the downtown Oakland offices of the County of Alameda. And outcomes changed. Um, the individuals that are graduating now from Project Search the last time I did my outcome um, report, it was around 14% were going into retail or grocery type positions, and that was because they went through Project Search, they learned about what our, most of our tasks are clerical in nature, um, and realized that, wow, you know, I really did like that experience that I had before Project Search where I was working in grocery store or a retail type environment. The great thing about that, though, is it's expanding opportunity. So for even individuals who decide, wow, I really liked that retail environment, they, that doesn't mean you have to just stay stuck in, a, in an entry-level position. So there's this young, one young man that I met. He went through Children's Hospital, Project Search. And prior to coming to Project Search, he'd worked with his father. He worked on the produce delivery truck with his father. He worked at the Christmas tree lots with his father. He learned how to use a chainsaw. He learned how to do the maintenance on the chainsaw. He changed the oil. And then his parents said, you need to learn something else. You need to get a better job. And you know maybe college isn't the right fit, so let's try this Project Search. And he went through Project Search, and he gained some amazing computer skills. He's a whiz with Excel. But he's like, you know, I don't really like sitting around all day. I really like to do some physical work. And Lowe's is right down the street from me. Why don't we explore something at Lowe's? And so we did. And Lowe's hired him not in an entry-level position, but in an upper position where he was in charge of downloading the daily Excel sheets to make sure all the maintenance tasks had been completed. And he checked the oil and all the self-serve saws 
and um, provided some customer support. So as an example of how going through Project Search, even though most of our tasks right now are clerical, can really help you gain some skills that you can then be successful in another area. So Project Search, we found, God, it's really, really changing outcomes, but now we have a lot of people who are interested in office work, right? We've got all these people with these great data entry skills and scanning and indexing and um, just, we need to diversify again. We need to figure out a way to create more opportunities. And so um, one of the things that came to be, and we'll, we'll talk more about it, is tailored day service. Um, prior to tailored day service, job development wasn't funded. There wasn't a funding mechanism through the regional center. There wasn't funding through the Department of Rehab. Sure, we got a placement fee and once a person was placed and another fee after 90 days, but it didn't cover the cost of a job developer. So we had one job developer. Now there's a new program funded by the regional center that provides a service called Taylor Day Service. So now when our individuals are graduating from Project Search, if they're not hired by the host comp business, and usually one or two are hired each year, um, they go into job development and we provide one-on-one -on -one support with, oh sorry, with our Taylor Day Service program um, up to 26 hours per month. And through that Taylor Day Service, we're starting to look at what else can we provide through the service. And um, we're starting to see a lot of dietary aid positions posted. And so we started a partnership with Castro Valley Adult School. The first class is starting March 14th, so probably a little late to sign up for that, but we're hoping that this is a successful partnership and that they offer it again. Uh, I believe graduation is in August, so hopefully this fall there'll be another class. But dietary aid positions has a wide variety of tasks that you can do. Some people will download the menus um, that people have filled out from their room. Some people will get telephone calls and make selections from a, a template where certain menu items have been blocked out for the doctor. Um, maybe the dietary aid is doing food prep. Maybe the dietary aid is um, doing some food service. So a lot of different job skills that people are going to learn and we'll provide that daily day tailored day service job coaching support during the class and then internships afterwards so project search has been successful with the internships exposing individuals to different types of work also exposing employers to the types of supports that we provide and helping employers realize individuals with disabilities are a really valuable workforce so we thought, well, gosh, well, how can we use these internships in another manner? And legislation passed last July that provided a new paid internship program. So the Department of Developmental Services provides funding to cover wages that's funneled through the regional center. Um, and then it's combined with job coaching support, either through Department of Rehab or a regional center. And um, we're able to pay individuals at least minimum wage and then they're on our payroll and we're reimbursed by the regional center. So this is really attractive to employers who before were like, oh, internships, unpaid, I think, you know, Department of Labor regulations and all these scary things that employers had to think about. So now this has opened the door. We've had internships through, um, we've just started internships with BART. So we have three individuals working at the shop in the yard who are, it, you know, it's, it's this combination of some physical work where you're distributing parts, but you're also doing a little bit of data entry. So we're really seeing this new paid internship pipeline um, it, as part of a, our paid internship program as part of like a kind of like a secondary internship to Project Search. So people find out what they're really interested in. We know what skills and capabilities they have. And then we can make a recommendation to an employer and use this internship as kind of like a, it's like a marketing or a working interview. Um, it's been really successful. So um, BART, we have an intern at Inner City Advisors, uh, an organization that helps local businesses um, learn the skills that they need to then grow their business and hire individuals who may be disadvantaged. Um, St. Paul's Towers, it's a retirement community over by Lake Merritt. They have a commitment to hire at least four people within this next year, and their process is um, the internship program. 
Um, we've had four individuals go through Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, and they've hired three into clerical positions. Our next internship with them will be facilities. Um, so that kind of summarizes what we're doing with at East Bay Innovations. We're all, always looking for new opportunities, always looking for referrals um, to employers, and um, and definitely are open to talking to you about what types of services might be a match. Most of our services are for individuals who are connected to the regional center. That's where the funding comes from. We have a, a little bit of uh, ability to serve individuals who are not connected to the regional center. And um, we do our, we have, we've started working with individuals who are students in their last year at Oakland Unified School District. So um, we have a partnership now with Alameda Health Services at the Highland Hospital, which is a, a combination of individuals who have exited school and are adults, and two students who are still in school, trying to bridge that gap so that individuals are not, are not leaving high school and not able to immediately connect to adult service providers.